Welcome to biology. Today we are continuing on with our biomolecules conversation and we're going to be focusing on nucleic acids. And, and today will really be an introduction to nucleic acids as we're going to focus more on uh, DNA and specifically later uh, how DNA can, can lead to protein synthesis. So uh, right now, again, we're just going to be introducing nucleic acids, uh, which, uh, as, you, as you might be able to see here, is really, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about DNA and RNA. Um, and, and so also to, to kind of take us back to what we've already covered, we've now talked about carbohydrates, which is one of our, our eh, they're, they're all important, but one of our most influential uh, biomolecules in, in helping form the others. Um, and so we learned about carbohydrates and the importance of those sugars. Then we've gone and talked about lipids and amino acids. And, and the role that they play in our body and how our body uses sugar to help create those. Um, and, and now here we are again with nucleic acid. And so uh, today you, you, you'll be again taking notes. I highly recommend you take notes on the information here. Uh, but you're really going to be looking at what is DNA, what is RNA, how are they different, how are they formed, what are some of the key characteristics that we use to identify them? Uh, you're going to be looking at some of these structures. And so uh, just talking about this, and as you go through the notes, this is what I really want you to pull out. This is a, a DNA strand, technically. And if we wanted to make it an RNA strand, we could uh, change what's called the, the ribose group here uh, with the deoxyribose group. And, and add uracil instead of thymine. Um, but, but again, this, here's what we're looking at. So, so DNA is composed of really three parts. You have a phosphate group, which this is right, phosphorus surrounded by oxygen. So that's going to be your phosphate group. That attaches to what's called deoxyribose. Uh, and, and this is a sugar. It is a five carbon sugar. So we have a carbon, a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon. Five carbon sugar in a ring. And uh, deoxyribose is actually missing an oxygen compared to ribose. So what we'll look at that more a little bit later. But deoxyribose is, is really the D in, in DNA. Uh, and so sugar is part of this backbone of our, our DNA. And so the sugar molecule with uh, the, the phosphate groups really make this kind of zigzag backbone uh, to the structure. And then hanging off of the backbone, we have the nitrogenous bases. And, and so then that's where we get our, our DNA, our nucleic acid. Um, so DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. And, and so the nucleic acid part really is the introduction of these nitrogen bases. And so you can see, one, why we call them nitrogen bases. Uh, they are composed of nitrogen with a, you know, car well, a reminder, there's carbon here in these unlabeled parts, but uh, kind of new to what we've been looking at, there's a lot of nitrogen. And that uh, really impacts the chemistry in, in how they're going to interact with other, uh, other molecules. Uh, and, and then, uh, you know, we, we call them nitrogenous bases, uh, right? There's, there's acids and, and there's bases. And so they are in the, the base category. And so that's where that comes from. Um, but so looking at this, we, we have four nitrogenous bases. And this is really because this is the only difference between uh, these DNA uh, molecules, these, these genes, if you will, is the nitrogenous base. That's how we talk about it. So because, the, again, the phosphate and, and the, uh, the sugar, the deoxyribose, they really just repeat, uh, we, we kind of, we, we assume that and, and we don't need to recognize that every single time. So then when we're talking about DNA, 
you'll always hear it really uh, in, in re relation to the adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, uh, or your A, G, C, T. Uh, and, and so these are our, our bases that really uh, create the blueprint and the sequence for, for all of uh, life and, and protein synthesis. So again, that's kind of where we're headed, but right now we're just looking at it you're obviously, you're not expected to visually be able to identify these or in any shape or form, but you can see that uh, adenine and guanine and cytosine all have some differences. And so we have uh, our purine bases and our pyrimidine bases. And uh, all you really need to, to recognize about that is the purine bases have two carbon rings and the pyrimidine. Uh, the uh, pyrimidian rings uh, are, are just a single carbon ring. And so uh, that helps us identify. And it's also going to help uh, under, uh, help us understand how they are going to pair together. Um, you, you might know this already, but DNA is actually composed of two strands uh, in, in the form of a double helix. And so we're going to talk more about that. Um, but these bases then have to pair with another base. And what you're going to find is that adenine will pair with thymine and guanine will pair with cytosine. And so uh, a big part of that is the fact that this is a double ring and this is a, sub, a single ring. And th then the chemistry there uh, allows for better bonding uh, between the molecules. And so these double rings do not want to bond with one another. And, and a big part of that is there's there's too much going on. Uh, and, and so there there's different polarizations that are kind of that push each other away as opposed to bonding. Um, so uh, again, we're going to talk more about that. But really the important part to take away, we have these sugar molecules that are really creating a backbone for our DNA and these nitrogenous bases to attach to. There we go. Okay, uh, so then moving on, uh, again, as, as I talked already, uh, A, adenine is gonna wanna attach to thymine, guanine to cytosine, uh, and, and so forth. And so, and so that's important, and you can see again, we have a single with a double, as far as the rings are concerned, uh, and, and that's a big part of the, the chemistry there. Um, and these are going to be hydrogen bonds. So if you, if you look back at this, again, you got these hydrogens that are kind of hanging out there, and those are what are going to allow for, for bonding to occur. One of the most important things, again, as, as I've mentioned now a few times, the ribose, uh, which would be the RNA and deoxyribose uh, portion of the nucleic acids or nucleotides, so that would be one single uh, part of the nucleic acid, is synthesized from glucose. Right? If we remember back to our learning target, we're supposed to be able to talk about how uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen from sugar molecules help create the other biomolecules, essentially. So that is the, the big port part there. So we really want to remember that the backbone is comprised of, of sugar. Um, oh, and I, I, I overlooked this one. I skipped this on accident. Again, looking at the difference between DNA, which is going to code for uh, our life, and, and RNA, which is actually used to translate that into protein synthesis, which we'll talk about in, in a little bit, the only difference is in, in oxygen there. Right, so we, we see that highlighted. That that is the only difference, and it allows for different um, types of bonding, yeah, which is what it does. So uh, it's amazing to me how small of a change uh, can really make it completely different in its function and role. Okay, uh, beyond that, I really want you to watch this this video. Uh, it, it's going to help talk through and show more of what I just talked about. But with that information, 
we can, again, with this introduction, uh, kind of hit on the main points uh, of nucleic acid and, and our DNA. Uh, this one, I just want to be clear, you can click and drag, okay, and then you kind of place it in the right spot, and if you make a mistake, you can close it out. Then I want you to, to have a hypothesis on what do you think would happen if, uh, and this will make more sense after you watch the video, if a nitrogen is base is paired with the wrong other base, you know, does that, is it possible? Can that happen? Um, but we talked about already which ones are supposed to go together, but can, can there be mistakes and what is that called if it is possible? And then I wanted us to really recap on the learning target. So this one's going to be really important that you do a, a as thorough of a job as possible, right? So for me as a teacher, I can look at this and go, yes, they understand the learning target. And so again, the learning target says construct and revise an explanation based on evidence for how carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen from sugar may combine with other elements to form amino acids and other large carbon-based molecules. So that's going to be uh, the lipids, the amino acids, and uh, nucleic acid here. So uh, then the prompt, use your notes. Uh, you know, I've been advising that you take notes. If you haven't taken notes, pull open your old assignments so that you can look through the notes. Use that as the evidence to then explain how carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen from sugar molecules make the, these major biomolecules, okay? So again, really important, do a thorough job. If you want to type it up in a Google Doc or something, then paste it in here, that's fine. Um, but I really want to make sure uh, you you don't just write a sentence to try to answer this. This is going to take more than a sentence. It might be a couple paragraphs, right? You, you might have a little paragraph on how sugar forms to create amino acids. You might how uh, how sugar can help form lipids, uh, and then how sugar can help form uh, nucleic acid. So keep that in mind as you're going through this. And of course, let me know if you have questions uh, in in class, or you're always welcome to email me.